Let's collide. Exactly. I like the way you're talking right now, sir. I'd like to collide <laughs> yeah. with you guys so much. <laughs> right. Um, first of all, thank you so much for coming in today. Of course. Um, I want to start with, uh, and you might have heard it when you were waiting, um, the only reason I get to do this interview and be here at TIFF is because of House of Aurora, which is where we're at. It's uh, my sponsor, and we partnered up with them, and I want to give a huge thank you to House of Aurora for enabling Collider to be at TIFF. So that's a... Cheers. Um, yeah, <laughs> that, that's Space Bear, but yes. Um, <laughs> another another one of our lovely uh, partners. Uh, so ha did the movie premiere yet? Is it premiering today? Uh, Monday. Uh, tomorrow. Oh, okay, so, so, uh, so, I'm, so I can tell you early how much I enjoyed the movie, and you really haven't heard that from too many people. Mm -hmm. Correct. <laughs> that's true, yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's yeah. great. We love yeah. that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, I'm going to make a sort of fun question before we ju jump, jump into the movie. But someone told me, and I could be mistaken, that um, you filmed suits like a block from here, or very close. Yeah, we shot suits uh, all over the place here, including noise. We we love noise. Uh, I shot suits all over the city. Yeah, our main building is just down the street. That would when we shot the like lobby stuff. Sure. But then most of the things indoors we shot up in Downsview. But everything all over Toronto. Now the, this is the first time I've been back here since I stopped shooting suits and driving around is just doing like a tour of suits for me. I went we shot there, we shot there. That's where I kissed Rachel. That's where that <laughs> happened. Oh. Well, no, I, I thought you filmed a lot of suits like really close, and I, I was nervous that like you were gonna have like a flat, like a like am I am I going to the wrong Absolutely. set right no, now? No, I have flashbacks. Well, that that's what Toronto is for me. You know. <laughs> I mean? Yeah. Um, okay, so that's my, my, my quick little Copy. Uh, thing about that. But um, so jumping into this project, uh, uh, no one watching this interview will have seen the movie yet, or maybe two people will have. So I hate asking the generic question, but can you talk a little bit about what it's about? Um, let's start with that. Cool. Yeah, well, the movie's called Clara, and it's about an astronomer, this guy, who's searching for life, and uh, he meets a very curious artist named Clara. And uh, they both share a fascination for the cosmos. And uh, NASA has just launched a couple telescopes that are really going to revolutionize our search for habitable worlds. So these two collaborate and get to looking and might even make a big discovery. <laughs> Isaac Bruno is sort of coming from, uh, that's who I play, Isaac Bruno, the astronomer. And he's coming sort of from a pretty serious life tragedy. And he's desperate to find life on other planet, and it's planets. And it's starting to come at the detriment to everything else in his life. He's, it's become an obsession. And that's when he hooks up with this sort of mysterious, wonderful artist played by Troyan. Um, how did you two first connect on this project? And, um, and how tough was it to get the financing to get this thing off the ground? Sure, I'll take that. Uh, so we first connected about five years ago now. Um, Akash was a, a bright-eyed 18-year-old at the time. Um, we met at a media conference uh, where he was pitching a project. And uh, I saw his pitch when he was just an 18 year old and I was so impressed by what he had put together and his poise uh, and I just approached him at that and said you know when, when you're done uh, high school <laughs> give me a call if you're interested in pursuing this as a career and um, two years later he sort of showed up on my door and said hey I'm, I'm here and I have an idea I want to pitch you and uh, it was great to hear from him and I welcomed him in and uh, and he pitched me the idea for Clara and I I was immediately taken by it um, sort of hits all the right notes for me as a uh, someone who makes film, but also someone who watches film is exactly the type of movie I like. A uh, bit of sci-fi, mystery, bit of a twist, and a lot of heart. And, um, and so that's how it began. And uh, over the course of the next couple of years, uh, we began putting the financing together. And um, it, you know, it took a little while to get people to uh, buy into a 20-year-old director at the time. Um, but over the course of about two years, we managed to convince enough people and we, we put it together. Um, and now, you know, he's 23 now, but so I guess it, it took us about four Old years, man. four years to make uh, the film. It, I, I'm giving you a lot of credit for this feature at 23. Mm. I, I, yeah. Thank you. So, <laughs> so we should. So all of us should. Yeah, no. Um, so what was it about? Where did the idea come from? And um, talk a little bit. About, well, let's start with that. Well, I am a big fan of space and uh, and science and astronomy for sure. And um, I don't know, I, you know, I, I love watching sci-fi films, like especially like The Martian or Interstellar with grounded real science. And uh, I think that there's an appetite for that with audiences right now. And um, for me personally, another big reason for telling a film about space and, and what we're actually doing right now is, uh, you know, you ever look on your news apps and I mean, most news is quite depressing, mm -hmm. but um, whenever I see like N NASA launch a telescope or we found a potentially habitable planet, I'm like, yes, that's the stuff that'll unite us as a human race. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to make a film where we're talking about astronomers, astronomers actually finding 
stuff out there and, uh, and, and using the real processes. Um, and of course, I, 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 to connect to a film like that, I, I need a human story. And, and I wanted to tell a story about these two very lost people who are searching for something and, and banding together. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm always curious about the editing process because it's the final rewrite. Uh, what did you discover about the movie in the editing process that maybe impacted the finished film? And uh, who did you trust for honest feedback? Ooh, um, I trust this guy for honest feedback a lot. He'll he'll let me know immediately when something's not working or not. Um, but uh, the edit really revealed that for me, especially as a young filmmaker and this being my first script, um, that going into the writing process uh, now, as I've written more scripts, uh, there are certain scenes where you don't necessarily need, like you can kind of skip and, and, and get to a moment with more impact. Um, so the editing process, you know, we definitely have a bunch of d deleted scenes now, but I, I feel like I told the story in the most concise way possible now. I'll just add to that, that we do have some deleted scenes, but so does every film, and I think relative to other films that I've produced, we, we actually don't have that much oh. uh, <laughs> extraneous footage. We, we have it. We used it almost everything. I mean, it was pretty tight. Uh, but you, you guys started cutting, but you guys went through a pretty sort of, uh, like you do with any film, an emotional process of having to like rethink what was working and what wasn't. You always That's try true. to seem to yeah, go in course. to try and edit the film that you had in your brain the first time, and you look at it and you go, all right, this is what I had. What's not working? And then you did a pretty brave dive back in to, to figure out what those pieces were. And the thing that came out on the other end of it is, is something very different and I think more concise and, and very effective. Yeah. Um, um, you obviously, when did you film this in relation to when you, were, was it after Suits? Or? It, no, no, it was right before my last season of Suits. So this was uh, like what you did on the hiatus? Yeah, it was right towards the end of my final hiatus, I guess. Yeah, it was in March. Right? March. Yeah. Started in March, yeah. yeah. 2017. So, yeah. so what was it for you? Um, I would imagine when you were making a TV show, your schedule, you know, you're working all, almost the year. Yeah. So what was it about this story and this character that said, yeah, I need to do this? Well, it was a long story. I mean, it took, first of all, it was him. I mean, talking to Akash on the phone and reading the script, the script changed a lot from the moment I received it to what we actually shot. Um, and I was lucky enough to be involved in that process. But right from the beginning, Akash, he's, he was so young and that was scary to me. I thought, oh my God, you know, an unproven director. He'd done a couple of things that were really great and he obviously knew his way around special effects. Um, and he had another film where it was clear that he understood how to tell a story, but you're still a brand new director and that's a little worrisome, um, especially when I had so little time during the year that I wanted to make the most of it and I wanted to make sure that if I was gonna do something that we could make it great. Um, but just talking to Akash for more than half an hour, you get the sense that he is the perfect fusion of what he was talking about, the science, the grounded science, the passion for science. Uh, he's so passionate about that and making sure that we get it right and being inspired to tell a great story based on that science. But then he was also completely focused on making sure that it was a human story and that it was grounded and that we got the most out of it because he knew instinctually, even at this young age, that, that, that all the gimmicks and the science and the special effects and all of that weren't going to be the thing that sells this, that it had to be human, that it had to be true, and we had to be saying something valuable. And for someone of his age to get that, and I, and I got that from him right off the bat, I thought, of course, I'd love to go on this, on this journey with him. Well, if I can add to that, I mean, uh, the script did evolve totally after I met Patrick and, and Troy, and uh, they both were so vital to the, the creation of what I feel is the final product. Um, so thank you. Yeah, I mean, it was, <laughs> and, uh, it was it, it's something that you don't often get to do, I think, when you make these films because there's so much pressure to get it right, to get it out there. And we actually took, we were going to shoot it earlier at one point, and then I was couldn't do it because I was just, my timeline wasn't going to work. And so if there was a period of time when I wasn't going to be in the film, even though we had spent six months talking about it, and I was happy to just hand it off and go, go, make that, your movie. That reality didn't work yeah, for me, though. <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> I was gonna, so I, then months later, we're yeah. like, no, we still got to do this. So yeah. the day, to, I, you know, God bless them. They they delayed for a little bit, and then we shot it in March. Yeah, and we met Troyan, who is one of the creative pillars of this film as yeah. well. Yeah, Troyan and I spent a good portion of our uh, of our honeymoon <laughs> working on Clara. Yeah, and I don't. Th she was she a, she was officially going to be in it by that point. Yeah. Yes, yeah. that was a few weeks before prep. Right, yeah. we, and we were Script we notes, were like Skypes. we were like right doing writing sessions with Akash back and forth, yeah. like from our from Skyping Bali from Bali. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was fun. <laughs> that's crazy. That, <laughs> yeah. that, that's uh, not but it normal. also shows you how passionate you were about the project. Yeah, we really cared, and they were kind enough to sort of welcome us on as producers. And I think they could sense that um, we wanted to be respectful of the process and just help Akash tell his story. But uh, we also felt like we we had something to bring to it, especially if we were going to play the character 
characters that we really wanted them to be grounded. We wanted to make the stakes as high as possible for them. And we just wanted to like help Akash navigate um, what's a kind of complex emotional story. And, and, and it's a lot of science. And there's a lot of different things going on. And we just tried to be defenders of the like, what story are we telling? How are these characters being served? Where are they going at every moment? And, and you know, it was always, we're all always on the same page. And it's difficult to welcome new people, creative people into a process, but they were always great about it. I'm realizing that I had three questions I was just going to ask, and I realized all three I can't ask because no one has seen the movie, and I can't talk about it. It's so it's so um, offline questions, right? It's like have you seen it? What have you seen it yet? You know, I totally saw it. Yeah, Yeah, it's all it's all stuff that I can't ask about. So let's move backwards. (laughs) Thank you for not asking. um, I always like asking about memorable moments from filming. So for each of you, what's a day or two that you will always remember forever about Mm -hmm. the making of the film? Um, I had the flu twice uh, while shooting this, so. uh, there are many days where I don't remember. <laughs> I was kind of in a fog, but it was uh, freezing, yeah. really cold. I remember uh, there's a there's a scene out on the bench, oh. and there's a lot of monologues or a couple of monologues in the movie that are quite long. And when you're on this kind of crunch schedule and so much is going on, you're really going to get one or two takes at them. And I was panicked because there's this very long, very important emotional scene. Um, on a bench out in the dark in the middle of winter. We were freezing. I think I was wearing like 300 layers. And uh, and I knew we had like two takes at it. We had two takes. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, I was very nervous about that because on suits, I'm so used to, you know, three-page scenes that we can shoot for six and a half hours. Uh, and this was like, we got to go. So I wasn't uh, totally ready for that. But it, it, it did that thing that happens when you're on a project that's supposed to that's just working so well where everything just sort of happens the way exactly the way it's supposed to happen. And yeah, that's actually, I think, my favorite scene in the yeah, film. It's a, yeah, it just turned yeah. out beautifully. It's a pivotal scene. Yeah, in the movie. and it's, yeah. it was just relaxed and it was easy and everybody was prepared and did their job. And that's when you feel really lucky to do what we do when you're on a set and you're like, you know, everybody has to do their job at the exact right time in the exact right way. Otherwise, you're not going to get the scene. And that's what's so exciting about making movies like this, but can also be the most frustrating part because if it doesn't work, you're like, oh, God, you have got you know, three more weeks of, you know, messing things up. And every day on this was just got better and better and tighter and tighter and tighter. Uh, I'll go next. Uh, we shot a scene, uh, which you will remember, um, where his character is looking at a giant display of a, uh, like a telescope yes. imaging, um, which looks like you're at a, like Caltech facility. And we shot that in a, uh, like a transit authority building <laughs> traffic so office. that, that yeah. screen in the film mm-hmm. uh, which works as the telescope is actually a giant traffic monitoring station in real life but uh, not that you could tell i just could not it, tell it looked so beautiful the way that our, our department put it together uh it really added a lot of production value and i, I just i love that scene so yeah that was a good day yeah. uh one of the things uh, that i liked is that i'm not a big fan of uh uh, learning, uh, it's <laughs> like a thing that's not I'm not good at. But I actually took away like I learned stuff about astronomy and the detecting. Like you did a really good job at layering in like like teaching mm-hmm. without like making it too difficult. If right. that makes any sense. So if, did you ever think about being a teacher? Um, I I actually did a year and a half of a B. Ed uh, before I dropped out and wanted to make movies. Yeah, so well, I I, didn't I was going to be a teacher uh, and. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think this is my way of sharing that kind of stuff. And uh, uh, yeah, in, in the film, honestly, what I really want people to take away from this are people who don't know astronomy that well. Um, and I want to kind of, you know, bring them closer to it. So I'm sure the experts will appreciate some of the tiny details. But really, what I, I want general audiences to know that re- really cool stuff are, is happening with uh, astronomy right now. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I'm, I still want to talk about stuff in the third act, and I can't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's move. Let's, um, uh, but that's the other thing. You mentioned it earlier about, like, but it's it really, for me, it was like a realistic portrayal of what could, you know. Um, and all the science in the film is, I mean, he yeah. he's so on point about it all. And a lot of our preparation was just sending each other, like, like articles that would come out and yeah. things that would happen would be like, oh my God, do you see this? Uh, how can we include it? Can you believe that this is real? And it was all well, totally the, real. The, the week we started shooting our film, uh, NASA announced that big discovery, Trappist-1, with seven new planets, exoplanets, and three of them are potentially habitable. Like that happened the week we started shooting our yeah. film. That was probably yeah. the greatest confidence yeah. boost we could have totally. gotten. Using that, the same 
techniques that yeah. we are using in the film and, and all the techniques that we describe yeah we described the real film. processes you know, I, we sat with with an astro- we with spent a lot of time yeah. with some phds yeah, we had, yeah science Ooh. advisors on the film going so. over all the science and making sure that it checked out and making sure that when they saw this film they wouldn't go like oh here we go another you know hollywood, hollywood thing yeah. going on <laughs> like they they all totally signed off on what we were talking about which is exciting I just realized how much you love Interstellar, and I realized who was just here. Yeah. 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 yeah no, uh, it, just, it just occurred to me. Well, Weren't actually, you listening to Interstellar on the way here? Well, that, uh, and <laughs> also, that, when I... people that don't realize Hans Zimmer was just here. Hans Zimmer was warming just, this right, seat. Right, right here. Yeah. And so, um, it's funny. Yeah. Well, actually, when I first wrote the script, I was listening to the Interstellar soundtrack, so... Yeah, it, that, that's that, that has to be weird. Full yeah. circle. So, yeah. Chris Nolan, like yeah. you, kind of changed the course of my life. <laughs> right. Um, everyone has been coming in uh, to the studio, except for Hans, because we didn't have enough time. Has been playing. Get to know your TIFF attendee. I swear to you, these are harmless questions. You do not have to be nervous. Um, for you, what TV show would you love to guest spot on? What TV show would you love to guest uh, uh, direct? And what TV show would you love to guest produce? Mm. Uh, no pressure. I, oh. Currently airing, or it can be anything you want. Oh, you can go back in oh, time. Oh, you can go back in time. Oh, you you shouldn't do that. That's, Fine, then it we has could to be, be here all day. <laughs> Just off the top of, I think I'm going to go. I'm going to go the Deuce right now. I think David Simon's mm-hmm. The Deuce is pretty amazing. I don't know what part I'd play, but uh, the acting and the writing on that show is incredible. I would definitely guest direct it maybe further down the line like a spin-off of game of thrones or something like that no, I, would, I was I gonna say that. the same thing <laughs> I, would, I would love to produce an episode of game of thrones just to get the experience of managing like two concurrent giant productions oh at the God. same time and, and <laughs> two crews in different countries at the exact same time do you uh, have a favorite sci-fi or fantasy film i'm gonna say contact off the top of my head just because it's been on my mind recently i just think in terms of grounded uh, sci-fi is such a beautiful, uh, moving film. Yeah, I would have said contact, but I'm Stole not it. steal your thunder. Uh, Interstellar, I gotta say it. Yeah, um, yeah, but he took took mine, so um, <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll go a little lighter. Probably the Fifth Element. Oh yeah. yes, Ooh. a lot of fun. <laughs> and then Back to the Future, just for bonus points. Yeah, of course. Uh, what film scared you as a kid? Cujo. Killer dog. Jurassic. Park, the first one. God, you're yeah. so young. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for me, it was all of the Nightmare on Elm Street uh, franchise. <laughs> um, is there anything that you collect? Cameras. Do you have film cameras? Is it just film or is it also digital? Film cam. I have a couple of digital cameras, but film cameras. Yeah. Rocks and minerals. You definitely are a science person, <laughs> yeah. without a doubt. Um, I have a, I have a collection of uh, pocket knives. That goes back a long time. Cool. Uh, do you own any mov- movie or TV show props? Mm-hmm. Uh, Did you borrow anything from the set of anything you've worked I on? Tons. Uh, <laughs> I was I was murdered on a show called Luck. Uh, sure. Michael Gambon murdered me with a glass ashtray, uh, so I have the ashtray, um, and I also have my severed head from that show, which was also used. <laughs> I have it in a box in my basement. I just use it to scare people sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, get, I kept a lot of props from the film, so. <laughs> Did you keep the uh, clapboard? Uh, sorry, which one? The, the, you know, the... Oh, no, no, they didn't yeah, let me, they didn't let me keep that. Oh, they're too, no. well, they're too, we were using the fancy ones with the digital numbers. Yeah, so. I mean, oh. they wouldn't let you, they wouldn't yeah. let you keep <laughs> that. The classic one. Yeah. I kept the Dylan album. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. For people that don't realize, uh, Bob Dylan plays a key role in this uh, movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I have lots of props and things from films that I've made, and I think including these pants were from Clara. Uh, yeah, leftovers. I have some of those pants too. Yeah, yeah those are good. <laughs> uh, what TV show have you watched all the way through more than once? The Sopranos. That seventy show. Breaking Bad. Uh, what's the background photo on your phone? Oh, I was gonna take it out. Uh, my dog. My dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can't say. <laughs> <laughs> um, what movie have you watched more than twenty times? Pulp Fiction. Oh, this is embarrassing. Forrest Gump. School of Rock. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you have a favorite pair of sneakers or shoes? I do, but I'm not wearing them today. But yes, I do. I have a trusted pair that I wear uh, Monday to Friday every week. Do you want to give a shout out to the brand? Yeah, what's their brand? Their Root. Go Canada. Canada. Red Wings. I have some Red Wings I've had for probably about six years. I got rock ports. Rock ports. Yeah. Um, 
uh, do you, this is uh, do you remember when you were growing up what made you want to get involved in the entertainment industry? Mm. Like, what was that thing? If there was just that one thing. Uh, for me, it was uh, it was just telling stories. For me, as a kid, uh, I surrounded myself in film and theater and television. I it it was where I went to feel better. It's where I went to feel a part of a community. Um, I, I just it was like church for me. Um, watching how stories unfold of all the different kinds of stories and and learning that that was something that you could actually do for a living was uh, was the pull. I thought, well, there's nothing in the world that I want to do more than that. Um, for me, uh, I grew up in the industry. My, my mother's an actress, my father's a producer, so uh, I was exposed to it my whole life and from a very early age. Um, I, I chose to gravitate towards the producing side, not the acting side, uh, but it was just something that I was sort of fascinated by from a very young age and had a, a lot of exposure to, so I sort of I got to pick up the business side of it in addition to the creative side of it. Um, and as I got older, it just became something that I, I really wanted to do, and um, I had a you know, a great uh, tutor in my father, so I got to ask him all the questions that you, you, you never learn about in film school. Um, yeah, so that's it. Um, before you answer, uh, with the fact that you wanted to possibly be in, like, you know, or interested in acting, if you will, uh, have you ever thought about doing like the Hitchcock thing where you're walking by in your films that you produce? Yeah, you were never in this film, right? You I didn't. Did no, you? No, I'm, I'm BG in the film at some point. You are yeah. okay. You, cool. you, you, I'm deep, I deep background, but yeah. yes, I, I do uh, cameos in all of my films. You'll you see go. me in some of them many times, <laughs> but deep in the background. Sure. What was what was your uh, uh, the re what got you into it? Uh, I had the original trilogy of Star Wars on VHS, and those were like the first live action movies I've ever seen. And immediately, as from like the youngest age, I knew I wanted to make movies. Um, my last question for you guys: um, Claire is part of the Toronto Film Festival. My favorite festival. I love this one. Um, what does it mean for each of you to be a part of this fest and with such amazing movies? Well, we're all from. I'm from Toronto. I'm we, from Toronto. Yeah, we yeah. both went to high school together. Actually, I mean, I uh, I've sat and lived in Toronto. Toronto's been a part of my life forever. I've watched the festival come through town my whole life and go away. And, th and as somebody wa wanted to be an actor and then became an actor and then was here shooting a show, I've always sort of watched the festival come and watch it go. And go oh man, that would be great to be a part of it. Uh, so for me, this is a, it's a bucket list. It's dream come true. And to be here with a film that we shot in Toronto with Canadians, that it is a, that is sort of a part of the beating heart of Canadian film is, it's such an honor and I feel very grateful. Yeah, no, I, uh, I'm i from Edmonton, and, and TIFF has always kind of been, what well, it's the biggest festival in Canada, and maybe even the world fil film festival. So uh, as a filmmaker, this is a dream come true happening right now. So, yeah. Um, yeah, for me, I mean, I, I've had other films in TIFF in the past, but um, for, for this particular film, you know, TIFF really does uh, provide a platform and an opportunity for a film like this to be discovered and to launch into the into the marketplace in a meaningful way uh, so we're you know really grateful to tiff for selecting us and giving us the opportunity to, to premiere in front of a big audience and you know talk to people like you uh, and help launch our film you know nobody's seen it uh, we haven't shown it to any buyers yet so this is a really important festival for us and um, it means a lot and we're happy to be here i was going to say um and even more grateful that i got to see it uh prior to you guys coming in i didn't realize buyers haven't even seen it yet yeah, um, Nobody, yeah. Seen so it. There, so, you know no pr uh, anyway listen thank you house of aurora for letting me do this interview and for being a great sponsor and sincerely uh congratulations and thank you so much for coming in thank you for having thank us you. yeah thank you.